The prospect of aliens has consumed the imagination of humanity for literally thousands of years since we first escaped the shackles of our home planet and started sending some shit up into space. This is wrapped up. Scientists have monitored signals searching for alien communications and we have broadcast our existence as far and wide as possible. Is it a good idea? Well, we'll only know when the aliens come and destroy us. We've even gone so far as to send an invitation out into deep space, showing what humans look like and where to find us relative to nearby stars. And we might as well just point out the weak areas on our body while we're at it. However, what would it be like if this actually happens? Now, in early movies, aliens were portrayed as dumb and barbaric creatures. They were always something akin to the xenomorphs from Alien, but, you know, just a bit more sh Typically, we were the ones portrayed as venturing into space to find them, and they lacked any real sentience at all. Now, this first changed in 1951 with the movie The Day the Earth Stood Still. This was the first movie to showcase contact with an alien race that was intellectually capable, and it presented well, a pretty frightening new dynamic. Humans had always been portrayed as superior, with aliens being these dangerous monsters. But that movie was different. Not only did the alien look like a human, it was smarter than all the world's scientists, and it could trigger events on a global scale like it was nothing. Worst of all, it was the first time the movie audiences were faced with the horrible truth that humans weren't the most superior life form in the universe. In fact, we were the problem. We were ants and the aliens knew about us, but they couldn't be bothered to interact with us because, you know, like you don't go into the woods and have a conversation with an anthill. But then we dropped nuclear bombs on each other and started sending shuttles into space. The aliens were like, oh, hello. So then Klaatu comes to Earth and he's going to be like, guys, guys, you can totally kill each other, use your own tanks and your planes or whatever you want. But if you let that aggression go out into space, well, these like interplanetary robot police are going to come and just wipe you all out without hesitation. Just FYI! Though this frightening new narrative was a product of the Cold War, what made it most frightening was how realistic it felt. We couldn't even get to the moon yet, so if an alien race were to come to Earth, then of course they were going to be far more advanced than us, and they were going to be able to do with us whatever they pleased, because there are superior robot god overlords. But at the end of the day, despite being just a little bit reminded how utterly, utterly insignificant we were, it lets off with a warning. And for all the ways that first contact with an alien species could realistically go down, this was probably the most optimistic. First First Contact so, science fiction loves to portray First Contact as a dramatic event. A Vulcan ship happens to be passing by as we test out our warp drive, so they come down and they say hi! That's uh, Star Trek First Contact, by the way, one of my favorite movies. On the less benevolent end of the spectrum, alien ships hover over Earth's capitals and open fire like in Independence Day. The uh, reality is, neither of these scenarios are terribly realistic. Our actual first contact with alien life is almost certainly not going to include the actual alien. Sorry, not sorry to everyone who still believes Area 51 is overflowing with extraterrestrials, but it is... Just a bit laughably unlikely. Our actual first contact is far more likely to be with a probe, a small craft operated by robots or something as simple as radio waves that have traveled across space. So it turns out the universe is pretty f***ing massive and it's not very economical to send scouting vessels flying around all willy-nilly in the event that maybe they find something cool. We're not suggesting that the aliens will be capitalists and that it won't be economical for them from a financial standpoint, but resources are finite. Unless they've discovered a source of infinite reusable energy, which, brilliant for them, but look, it's still not going to be very pragmatic. Even if they had developed some sort of magical source of energy, that wouldn't be a very fun voyage for the crew. I mean, sure, there'd be an overwhelming sense of excitement and adventure at first, but, you know, after 30 years of traveling and not even leaving their own solar system, it's going to get fairly dull fairly quickly. Now, look, admittedly, that is using the constraints of human technology, but, well, that actually brings us to another point entirely. Our first contact may be with a probe or a small shuttle full of robots, but it's also possible that the aliens could be these robots. Because of how long space travel takes, they may have solved the problem of uploading consciousness and transcending their flesh and bones before embarking on the journey. By the way, even though this sounds fairly new, we've already done a video all about uploading your brain into a computer, which is something that I hoped for, but then that video crushed my dreams of having a sweet robot body. No, this doesn't necessarily change what our interactions with them would be like, it's just a fun idea. We're not so different, you and I.
After the initial space probing is done and the aliens have discovered that we're here, they may decide to come and meet us for themselves. So, should we expect little green men? What about amorphous blobs of goo? Well, despite the fact that they did it originally for budgetary reasons, the original Star Trek may have actually been bang on about depicting aliens as extremely human-like. There's a good chance that any extraterrestrials from an Earth-like planet will actually look a lot like humans thanks to something called convergent evolution. Like, take dolphins and sharks as an example. They're both fast-moving predators with smooth skin and fins that cut through the water to chase prey. They look pretty similar, especially compared to the myriad of different life forms in the ocean, and they have a lot of similar behaviors and functionality. However, their last common ancestor was nearly 300 million years ago, and their evolutionary paths have been extremely different. Among other major differences, sharks are fish and dolphins are mammals. That's a big one. From that one common ancestor, their evolutionary paths branched. One line remained in the ocean as fish and eventually created sharks, while the other left the water and became mammals. Some of these mammals then returned to the sea where they evolved into dolphins and, fun fact, also whales. Similarly, there are marsupials from Australia. Isolated from the rest of the world and using pouches instead of placenta to develop their young, they still evolved into species very similar to those from all around the world. The now extinct thylacine looked just like a canine, but it had a marsupial pouch. Australia also has marsupial moles and margaras, which look exactly like rodents, but are again marsupials. It's pretty crazy stuff. Now, Earth has also been through five mass extinction events already, but the types of life that keep evolving one after another are strikingly similar, to the point that evolutionary biologists often question how much of evolution is actually random and how much is destined to always lead to a similar outcome. Knowing what we know about convergent evolution, it's pretty likely that the aliens are actually going to look a lot like humans. That's not to say that they'll be able to disappear seamlessly into a crowd. That is extremely implausible. But the difference in appearance between us and aliens from an Earth-like planet would likely be about as much difference between a shark and a dolphin rather than a shark and, say, an elephant. As a quick side note here, it's important to remember that the aliens would look different from one another as well. Movies and TV shows often love to depict alien races all being just carbon copies of one another, but even if we did come across the stereotypical grey aliens, it stands to reason that there would be as much variation in their physical appearance as there is in ours. But look, enough stalling, it's destroying my watch time. Let's get on to the doomsday stuff. We come in peace, shoot to kill. Okay, so the alien probe found our planet. Then years later, a piloted spacecraft comes to land here. From that ship, a number of remarkably human-looking aliens disembark. Will they come in peace and offer to solve all of humanity's problems? Yes, of course they will. They've also bought Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny and everything's amazing. And yeah, look. Theoretically, of course it's possible that these aliens could be benevolent, but let's just say that it's unlikely. We could also phrase it as extremely f***ing unlikely. For starters, they came to us. We are still unimaginably far away from interstellar exploration, but they were able to come all the way to Earth. It's not necessarily fair to say that they would compare us to ants, especially if we're of relatively similar size, but they would absolutely see us as inferior beings, and they would be right to do so. If you wanted to use an animal for a comparison, a dog might be a better option. We'd be dumb as hell when compared to the aliens, but easily trained and maybe theoretically useful. So the aliens are going to view us of like weird smooth dogs. However, given that we know they'll probably be similar to us, at least biologically, it is isn't unreasonable to think that their behavior might be similar to ours as well. Just think about all those history classes you took when an expanding empire comes across another civilization that they found primitive and think of how many times that worked out great for the primitive people. I can't think of a single f***ing example. Now we already mentioned that resources are finite, but Earth is full of resources. Not only could aliens be more interested in the planet's resources than in being our new BFFs, but seeing as we're actively using those resources, we could be seen as pests that need to be eliminated, or, or we could be enslaved, or hunted for sport, or herded into small areas to keep us out of the way of their extremely important colonization. Look, from everything we know about humans, which is kind of our only reference point, this seems like the most likely outcome. But the thing is, we can't actually know. No matter 
how advanced game theory becomes in terms of predicting the actions of political powers, aliens are going to be different. Without having met them, we can't know for sure what values will guide their actions or what resources are of most interest. All we can do is make assumptions based on our own behavior. And of course, we can also use evolution. While it would be nice to think that such an advanced civilization would be completely altruistic, evolution favors aggression. Not necessarily aggression bordering on psychopathy, but some level of aggression is important from an evolutionary standpoint for both self-preservation and for reproductive potential. The good news is that that means you could justify your BDSM desires as an evolutionary imperative, but the bad news is that it means the aliens are probably gonna murder all of us. Get in your fun while you can. And look, even if extraterrestrial visitors really do come in peace and want to make all of our lives better, there's still another problem. Your body is home to roughly 39 trillion bacteria and microbes, of which about 1.5 trillion live on your skin, fun fact. If the same is true of aliens, and reasonably speaking it should be, that creates even more problems. These microbes may be harmless to the aliens, just like the ones living on our bodies are harmless to us, but that doesn't mean our bacteria are going to be harmless to each other. For all we know, our skin could just be different enough that the microbes on their bodies would be the equivalent of flesh-eating bacteria for us. And this fear goes in both directions as well. Alien visitors to our planet could become infected by bacteria or viruses on Earth that their immune systems aren't used to and they could suddenly die lighting a powder keg of war with an alien race that neither side intended to initiate but would definitely <laughs> definitely go really badly for us. Remember, they traveled from another star to our planet. It's really far. They'd be really powerful. Wrap up. The universe is unfathomably large, and the idea that there isn't life somewhere out there is a little bit narcissistic. It's a little more than a little bit narcissistic. It's uh, narcissistic beyond belief. So are any of us going to live to see first contact with an alien species? <clears throat> Almost certainly not. Traveling through space takes forever, and if we haven't picked up any signs or transmissions anywhere in deep space from extraterrestrials, they probably won't be coming here anytime soon. And even though the idea of actually meeting aliens is extraordinarily cool in theory, it's just probably for the best that we never do. From everything we understand about evolution, the universe, and mankind's own examples of colonialism, exploitation, and, well, genocide, there is almost no way that it's going to end well for us. Of course, much of this is also based on the human experience. Perhaps life on their planet evolved in such a way that not only was aggression not important for survival, but it was actually detrimental, resulting in them becoming the most chill and laid-back aliens ever. That'd be cool. But it's really unlikely. I'm sorry.